Hi, I'm Angel. And I'm Billy. We have Baby. Say hi. Hello. Thanks for joining us at the Natural Lifestyle Show. Today we're going to be talking about something really interesting. It's really? A, yeah. <laughs> okay, that's good. It's a type of gardening called keyhole gardening. What's that? It was actually invented by this agricultural organization that established in Africa. It helps the African people get out of poverty. So what do they do? They send keyholes over there? They plant gardens in them? No, it's called a keyhole garden because when you look at it from the top, it looks like a keyhole. Oh, okay. Yeah. That makes sense. And this kind of garden I want Billy and I to do, and our family to do this uh, summer, because it is um, a sustainable type of garden that is easy to do. And I like easy to do things that are sustainable and work out really, really well and have a good yield. Sounds good to me. Yeah, I mean, this is kind of amazing when you hear about you know the system um so i just go in and jump in and tell you and i'm going to have a link below to the actual sheet from the organization so you can see they have little um images that show you step by step how to do it and also um, i'm gonna need that <laughs> and this is what a keyhole garden looks like oh isn't that good <laughs> Yeah, and we'll have more images at the end of the video so you can see other keyhole gardens and Are action. they images of me or just keyhole gardens? Uh, unless you're in Africa, no, they're... No. <laughs> no, I'm not in Africa. They're African keyhole gardens from the organization's website. Um, but I'll tell you basically how to make it because I, I familiarized myself with it. And um, so it basically seems pretty clear-cut and easy to do. Okay. So this is my take on it. Okay, you take two sticks and you, um, you tie twine to them about a five foot length. You push one stick into the ground and the other stick you pull it tight where the twine's tight and you just draw a circle in the ground around that one stick. Uh -huh. So that's just mapping out your garden area. Okay. So after you do that, take like about a two foot section on the outside of the circle and make it go inward like a triangle and that's going to be like you know part of your keyhole shape there and okay. and that's going to lead to your compost pile that's going to be in the middle of your garden now that is interesting it is very interesting I like that. It'd be yeah. easier to spread it out well it's you don't have to spread it out it's going to do it itself we'll talk oh. about it we're going to talk about how that happens but basically it's going to be a circular garden with a triangle leading to a compost pile in the middle that's right baby and they suggest that you take like some broken pots or whatever and put it on the ground at the bottom to um, for good soil drainage. So, I mean, I guess that's just up to you if you want to do that or not. This sounds like a good idea, though. Yeah. And for the compost, the circular compost in the middle, ooh, you're biting money. <laughs> it's very, because they do these things like, you know, because they don't have a lot of money in Africa. So, everything that, that they have to do, you can do it very easily and affordably at home. So, in order to make the circular compost bin in the middle, they just take like these little cane sticks. And I've seen these like being sold like at Walmart and things to support tomatoes. We've bought uh -huh. a lot of them in the past. Yeah, well, I think we still got some. Probably. So, you just take some of those and some wire and you wire them together into a circle. And I don't really know if they tell how big the circle would be. I would think that, you know, just because it's not really a big garden. It's just 10 feet around. Mm -hmm. So, I think maybe two three feet wide something else you can use now i do know that you can get those bamboo sticks that you, they use for tomato sticks that's not, i think you'd be able to use those oh yeah that would be perfect so you just take those sticks and you just wire them together till you have a circle and mm -hmm. that circle is your compost bin so you just put that in the middle and kind of you know secure that into the ground some yeah because what you're going to do is you're going to have that um in the middle and then you're going to put the dirt to slope down so it's going to be like a mound. Okay. And so once you have the compost being together, you're going to want to put um, some topsoil in the bottom. It mm -hmm. says fill it about halfway with topsoil and line it with straw. Because when you're composting things, the um, percentages of brown matter and stuff like that that you have really okay. matters to how well you compost. So you want to start off with the topsoil. You want to have all the, you know, lined in straw because that's going to help your things compost better. And then, you know, as you get, um, you know, food scraps out of your kitchen and stuff, you can just bring it out there and put it in your compost bin. And to see that's a compost bin right in the middle of your garden. So, okay, but you have your compost bin made. Mm -hmm. You have 
the area mapped out so far. There's two things. Yes. So before you start putting the soil down that's going to slope down from the compost bin, you're going to want to line the area with rocks or logs or whatever you have. Good idea. Yeah, just to keep um, erosion from happening in your garden. Now, would you need to bury those just a little bit? Sure, it would be a good idea if you want to do that, and especially depending on how many rocks you have. But I'm thinking, you know, probably bigger rocks the better. Yeah. You don't want to line it with pebbles, really, <laughs> anything like that. Or, you know, logs, or even if you live out in the woods, probably just some big, you know, sticks that fell out of trees. Mm -hmm. You could do all kinds of stuff. Yeah, and, you know, and all this sounds affordable to me because it sounds like a lot of you. I mean, the only thing really it sounds like you really have to buy is twine. Yeah, the twine, which is, you know, dollar store, if that's, yep. if that's what you have to do there. But um, as far as the soil, this is what they suggest um, by way of, of soil. They say to um, put down... A mixture of topsoil, compost, and rotted animal manure. Now, I'm not too keen on using rotted animal manure, so I thought about it. And I thought about the mixture that we used for the square foot garden we did last mm -hmm. year. And that mixture is one-third blended compost, one-third peat moss, and one-third vermiculite. And so I thought that we'll probably do that blend. Yeah, because that worked out good. It did. It was very, very good for the plants. Mm -hmm. we, it seemed to work really well. And, you know, with this compost basket in the middle, it's really going to just be feeding the garden nutrients. Mm -hmm. Because they say, um, well, when you put it down, they say to put the good soil on top. But this, we're just going to do a mixture. Yeah, we so, just mix it up. Yeah, so we're just going to mix it and slope it down from the basket. And she's going to bite mommy. <laughs> <laughs> and, um... And they say to plant your seeds and water the soil until the roots take hold really good. And then at that point, they say to water inside of the basket. Okay. Because by that time, you probably have some good compost going on too. And so when you water the inside of the basket, it's going to water the plants and it's going to give them nutrients from the basket. That sounds like a good idea. I mean, so that's just really cool. It's like, you know, just um, feeding your plants water and nutrients every time you water them. It is a really good idea. Yeah, and it's a never-ending cycle because the compost, you know, is going to sustain that slope because, you know, you can... Um, you can put the compost, like if you, there's erosion or something, I'm mm -hmm. sure you could take the compost out and just put it around or put mulch around too. But, I mean, it's just a totally cool system. I was just really thrilled when I saw it. Yeah, it sounds like a great idea. <laughs> it is, and, and it's really cool to look at their website too and see the success that these African people are having because these are people that have had so much trouble growing things in their area because a lot of times the soil is just not very friendly to growing things and it's so dry and they've had so yeah. much trouble and then you see that they have such lush gardens with the system mm -hmm. and it's literally helped to take people out of poverty there and so and it can help you be more sustainable and grow more and more food for yourself here. and you know the more that you can do for yourself is the less you have to get at the store that's and true you know and see you know what you're putting into your food mm -hmm. where when you go to the store i mean you god only knows what they're doing that's true. I mean, even if it's organic or something, the wa even the water, I don't know if anybody's ever thought about this, mm -hmm. uh, but the water that they spray down on it is probably chlorinated and fl it has fluoride in it because it's probably, you know, the in the city water yep. system. Unless you get a farm that has a well or something, they may, they may you know, or yeah. have some kind of river running through there. I mean, you, you may have a good chance there, but if they're using city water, I mean, we all know well, that I they mean, put a lot I'm, in there. Yeah, I mean, just like when you go in the store, you know how when they put the sprays, oh, yeah, the sprays yeah, the down. Sprayers. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. I and, mean, because you know I think what? about a lot of stuff. <laughs> And you know what, if you really look into it, because I, I know because I've dealt with uh, grocery stores before in the past, but uh, even the sprayer itself will get uh, mold and stuff in it, and then that's spraying down on your food. Yeah, which I mean, we're not trying to scare you or anything. Oh, we're no. just saying that, the you know, it's just better to do it yourself if you can. Yeah. And not only that, that you can give it away to your mm -hmm. neighbors, to people who need it, or you could sell, you know, extra. Because yep. if you have a really good sustainable system that grows really really strong pretty abundant plants then i mean that's just a great thing mm -hmm. it's sure absolutely is absolutely a great thing and i think that this system is something that a lot of people should put into practice i honestly I think, think so that too what do you think Eliana? i mean because what i mean what i don't see nothing bad in it you're saving money you're growing your own food recycling i mean you're recycling i mean all of it sounds good and the best part it seems 
easy. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the key word, especially for us guys out there. It's easy. And yeah, I mean, you don't have to tell her how easy it is. So watch out for this summer. We're going to be putting up a few of these keyhole gardens. Yep. Yeah, and so it's going to be really, really cool, really fun. You'll get to we'll, see how it goes we'll for us. We'll probably shoot some videos of it. Oh yeah, definitely getting it ready. Mm -hmm. Everything just all throughout the summer. We'll just update you on it. That's right. And show you our harvests. So we we're so glad that you joined us, and we hope that you learned something um, from this video, and that maybe you will plant uh, at least one keyhole garden this summer at or least try this it spring. Out. Yeah, try it out, and let us know what you think about it. And like I said, I have a link below to the organization and to mm -hmm. my blog post that will have like in detail the materials and things that you need. Because I didn't really want to bore you going through every <laughs> single material. I just wanted to explain the concept and show you the pictures. The basics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, sign up for our newsletter. Join us on our group, Living the Natural Life on Facebook. There'll be a link below. And join us on all of our social media. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Thanks. And here's the pictures of the other Keyhole Gardens for you to enjoy. stick you pull the yeah